So good afternoon everyone. This is afternoon where I am now and you're welcome to um, this webinar. I titled it how to study abroad even if you do not come from a rich family and and that's what we're going to be looking at. Good afternoon Kadista, you're welcome. Okay, so right away we'll just jump in. So first and foremost, I'll give you a brief introduction of myself. Um, I know a couple of persons here didn't know me, but I'm not sure you know my full story, okay? So I'm going to give um, a very brief introduction of myself and what I'm doing now and why it's important you listen to me um, along these areas, okay? So my name is Gideon, Gideon Egareva, and at the moment I am studying, I'm doing my master's degree program in the University of Rostock, Germany. And um, this is my second year in Germany, okay? So I want to share a couple of lessons, you know, I've picked up in my journey from when I made my applications, all the hurdles I had to climb to when I came to Germany and all the things I've had to go through, okay? I taught it twice to actually share and I know it's going to be, uh, <clears throat> you're going to derive a lot of value from it, all right? So I finished um, my bachelor's degree in 2015. So I went to the University of Benin, where I studied electrical and electronics engineering from 2010 to 2015. So good afternoon and you're welcome. So at the end of 2015, I had to wait. I had to wait for the eight months or so before I went for my national youth service. So I was in Benin at the moment. So the national youth service started sometime in 2016. Okay, and I served in Ogun State, Nigeria. So while I was serving, I was posted to, I think it's more of a village, a community, although the community was quite close to Lagos. Um, those of you who are familiar with Ogun State and Lagos, you may know Agbado and um, what's it called? Matogun, <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm really forgetting the names. Matogun, yes. It's, it's quite close to Agege. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to be very, very... Um, okay, somebody's asking what's the topic. Um, okay, I posted it earlier today. It's how to study abroad even if you're not from a rich family. So it's basically about those who would like to um, pursue a degree overseas now or sometime in the future. So that's what I'll be talking about. So first and foremost, I'm just giving a brief um, overview of myself and my journey so far. And then we'll jump right into the topic. Okay, so like I was saying, um, so when I was seven, I, I was teaching. I was teaching in a, in a school. I suppose that was my PPA. And while teaching, I was also working part-time with a company in Lagos. And we we're into solar engineering. Okay, so when I was about to round off with my service, I got selected um, for a training. It was called Graduate Engineering Training. And it was organized by the Energy Institute UK in collaboration with um, the Royal Academy UK. And they were organizing it um, in Lagos, Yaba, Lagos, Luna Deck. Okay, Luna Deck, they have, they have a facility there. And um, luckily enough for me, I got in a month before my service. Now, it's very important while I'm telling you this story. Okay, I got in a month before the end of my service. And it was while I was there, I got um, first-hand information on what I needed to do to study overseas. Because while I was doing my youth service, I had the plan. I had the idea that, oh man, I'd love to study overseas. But I had no single idea on how to go about it. Neither did I have the finance. Because I was just a regular copper. Okay, I was just a regular copper who was receiving. At that moment, I was receiving 19800 from from... Um, from the government and I didn't have any money. Okay, I didn't have any money saved somewhere to bank on, but I just knew I had a desire that I wanted to study overseas. Okay, so a month, like I was saying, a month um, before the end of my service, I went for that training. And so it was in that training, I met a lot of uh, young guys, amazing guys all around Nigeria. And then I met a very good friend of mine and he told me that he just got admission into a school in, in Germany and that he was going to leave in a couple of months. And I was excited. I was like, wow, are you serious? How did you do it? And then he told me he just applied. I was like, is that possible? 
And then he told me something that, you know, it sparked the beginning of my journey. He told me that in Germany, you could get tuition free schools. That means you could get schools where you do not have to pay school fees. And I was like, is that true? Because all my life, I've never heard of that. I couldn't believe that there was such, um, such a really great, um, such a great news and it was not so popular. So I was doubting, like, are you sure? And here he told me that, yes, that you could get tuition free schools in Germany. And I think that was the real hope for me because um, I knew you could, I could easily get an admission into other schools like in the UK, the US, um, Canada, but I also knew the school fees there, they were quite expensive. And at the moment I couldn't afford them. And so when I heard that there was the opportunity of getting a tuition free school, in Germany, I was really excited about it. So I asked him, how did you go about it? And so he gave me a couple of ideas and then that started my journey. And so from 2017, I started reading more. I started researching and I started making my own applications. I made um, a couple of mistakes. I picked myself up and by God's grace in 2018, I was in Germany. So what I'm gonna do is, so that's the brief overview myself so i'm just going to go through all the things i did and how you can start searching for schools now and how you can make your applications and how you can book your flight tickets yourself and all of that okay uh, so secondly i'm going to speak briefly on the advantages of studying abroad okay why is it great for you to consider that as an option um, honestly the major reason why I decided to study overseas was so I could get, you know, a certain level of knowledge because I have um, a couple of plans um, along my career line, the things I would want to do in say five, 10 years from now. And I was already, I already knew back in 2016 that um, I needed a certain level of knowledge, certain level of expertise, which I believed was not available to me in Nigeria. Okay, so I needed to go to a place where uh, they were quite advanced in knowledge and they had done a couple of things so I could learn from them and my goal was so I could come back to replicate in Africa. Okay, and so that was one of my goals. Okay, of course, over time, I've the goals have changed a bit. Okay, not really changed, but I've added to them. Okay, not just having to replicate it in Africa, but I'm also seeing other advantages of studying overseas. So like I said, one of the advantages is that you get, um, I mean, real good facilities, um, good professors, uh, you get top, top world-class knowledge if you're a person who really loves knowledge, and that's a major advantage. Okay, second advantage is if you plan to, you know, <clears throat> move outside of Nigeria, I'm um, going out to study is a very is a very great opportunity to do that because for a lot of countries once you're done studying you can easily stay you can easily stay back I mean legally okay once you're done studying you can easily get a job with them if you want uh, if you want to like I said if you want to come back to Nigeria even when you return back to Nigeria I mean your value just increases okay and you can if you want to work with a company in Nigeria like I said, your value increases, so you could set up your own and, I mean, it's a major game changer. So there are a lot of advantages, okay, and also the, the exposures, because when you study overseas, you get to make new friends from all around the world, you know, and, and I think that um, going overseas to study more than just the, the curriculum, okay, the fact that you travel, you meet people from different backgrounds, from different culture, it is learning on its own, it's education on its own. And um, I've learned a lot from my school, from my university, but if I'm to look back and, and, and say, okay, Gideon, you've been here for so, so, so number of, of months, um, what would you say has been um, your greatest, you know, <clears throat> what have you learned the most from? I'll tell you it's from associating with people, just associating with people from different backgrounds, talking to them, seeing life from a different view. I'm telling you, it has helped me a lot. Okay, so those are some of the advantages of studying overseas. Okay, All right. then we'll move on to the third. So what are the opportunities that are bound in, in Europe and in Germany? Like I said, I'm going to focus more on Germ in Germany because I'm in Germany, okay, and so I can give you first-hand information. 
in Germany, it's really amazing that you can have tuition free schools. I mean, top class schools, world class schools, you know, world class professors, and you do not have to pay any school fees. Isn't that amazing? It's true. Okay, and I'm currently one. And I'll tell you, it's because it's a tuition free school. That's the major reason why I'm here. That's why I could afford it. Because at the moment, I, I, I mean, I said when I was in Nigeria, I couldn't afford it. Okay, so you can have free tuition free schools in Germany, and and that's really great. And the good thing is that apart from the tuition free schools, Germany also um, <clears throat> gives you the opportunity to work. Okay, as a student to work. I think according to the law, um, when you are when you're in session, you're able to work. You're allowed to work up to twenty hours a week. And then when you're on holidays, you can work more, okay? And even if you work 15 hours a week or 10 hours a week or let's say 20 hours a week, depending on the city where you are in, you will be able to um, cater for your monthly bills. That includes your accommodation, your insurance, your feeding, what, what have you. You'll be able to cater for it and even have some things to save. So that's really good. So the country is affording you. They are offering you free education and they're also offering you a chance to work, pay your bills, and earn money. I mean, what could you ask for? Okay, what more could you ask for? So we're going to just explore, explore the opportunities from basics. How do you get um, into Germany? How do you plan for it? Okay, so the first thing you need to do. Now, I'm going to talk about it in two ways. I'm going to talk about it um, first from the standpoint of you applying for a master's degree and from a standpoint of you um, applying for a bachelor's. But I'm going to focus more on the master's degree. But then other things I'm going to say for master's degree, you can easily apply them um, for a bachelor's degree. So if you want to go for a master's degree in Germany, that means you would have already, you should be done with your bachelor's degree in Nigeria, for instance. Okay, or you're in your final year. So I encourage people, you, you do not necessarily have to wait till you finish uh, from the university before you start um, planning towards your journey if you have it in mind, okay? You do not need to, because if, you, if you're in your final year, for instance, or um, maybe your third year, if you have the right information, you could already have a list of schools you plan to, to apply to, you already know their requirements, and so you start preparing ahead of time. So that's why this information is very important. So even if you're still in the university, I want to urge you to listen, and if you are done, I want you to listen even better, <laughs> okay? And then if, you, if, you, if you're not in the university yet, maybe you, you just finished your secondary school, you have your YEC or something, yeah, I want you to listen to it because the things I'm going to say for masters, you can easily apply them for a bachelor's degree. You, can, you could also come here because Germany also have, um, offers a free tuition for even bachelors, okay? But, uh, but there's a caveat, there's a caveat for bachelor's degree and I'll, I'll tell you, okay? So... Like I said, for master's degree. So the first thing I want to urge you, if you're done with your bachelor's degree in Nigeria, immediately, please listen to this, immediately apply for your transcript. This is very important. Immediately you're done with your bachelor's degree, if you do not have your transcript at hand yet, please apply for it. Because the system we have in Nigeria is quite funny. It's, I mean, it's, it's quite, it, it's a very funny system because sometimes you need your transcript and the universities for some reasons best known to them, they'll just delay it unnecessarily such that if you have a pressing um, deadline, let's say you're, you do not have your transcript yet, okay, and then you apply to a German school and then the deadline is in two months you think oh two months it's okay my university in nigeria will get me my transcript but i'm telling you i've seen this happen time and time again okay that folks apply to their universities requesting for their transcripts and one issue or the other okay it takes so long it takes three four months six months and a lot of times some of them already had scholarship opportunities some of them had um, school opportunities and then <clears throat> and then it just get lost Okay, so what I always advise, before you apply for that school, before you apply for that scholarship, please apply for your transcript. Yeah, Glory said they are waiting for to give them money. And yeah, I mean, we know the system we're in. That's true. That's true. So before, before, you, before you apply for that school, even when you think, okay, maybe I'm going to apply for, um, to study overseas next year, please get your transcript now. 
you know it was my first point because it's so important that it looks little but i'm telling you because you could do every other thing you could do every other thing you already have the admission you already okay okay you will not get the admission yet without the transcript but let's say you already have the opening you already have um, the offer and then transcript just one transcript right, and frustrates you so it's better you you fight all the battles now okay start going to all their offices now i knew what it took me to get my transcript so start doing all the dirty work now go to the offices cry the cry you need to cry beg the beg you need to beg i mean so funny to get transcript which should not happen because here in germany i needed my transcript you know after my my second semester and i just wrote i just wrote the lady in charge i just sent her an email that hello please i need my transcripts simple I next one week I saw my transcript as post, okay, and they also sent me the e copy, and I was like, see, this is the way life should be. But when I wanted to get my transcript in Nigeria, oh boy, oh boy, it has to be who know who. I paid this, I went this, and all around. So, but that's the system we're in, and you cannot change it overnight. So what you can do is that you can understand that this is the unique system I'm in, and you find a way to beat it. And the way to beat it is apply ahead of time. Okay, and so one of the ways you can apply for your transcript is this website. That's what I used. It's called etx.ng. Let me see if I can type it etx.ng.com. Um, it helps you, like, I don't, they do not, they do not work with all the schools in Nigeria at the moment, but they work with a lot. So you can check etx.ng. I just, I'll, I'll post it now. And I'll see if I can pin the comments. Okay, yeah, I just posted it. So that site, www.etxng.com. All right, it allows you to, it allows you to uh, request for your transcript. It allows you to request for your transcript online. Okay, so you can go to that site, etxng.com, and then because that was what I used you can you check if your school is part of um the database because they work with a couple of schools okay you check if your school is part of it you can apply for transcripts online and the good thing about them is that you do not need to because let's say you're you're in abuja now and you schooled in meduguri you necessarily do not have to travel to meduguri just because you need your transcript if Medug if the university of meduguri is in the database i don't know all the schools in that database so you can just check if your university is there if it's there then it makes life pretty easy okay so you on that website you go for transcript services just follow the prompt it's easy once you can read you just read transcript services you feel your name maybe your math number and then they'll ask you because okay i want to say this thing in nigeria most times um, they send transcripts to only universities, to only only schools. So let's say a school from overseas requests your transcript. Usually, what Nigeria universities usually do is that they will send, they will want to send your transcript directly to the school. They will not want to send it to you. Okay. So the second time they do that is the the second thing they do is they also send your transcripts directly to a company so let's say you applied for a job and the company needs to verify your grades so the request for your transcript so the universities in nigeria can send your transcript directly to companies so usually universities in nigeria do not send transcript i mean official transcript not student copy they do not send official transcript directly to students they send them either to schools or to companies okay but that's an issue because if you want to apply for multiple schools because of course it's good for you to apply to to multiple schools because in case you know don't put all your eggs in one basket in case one does not work out another one can work out but the issue with with that will be that it's going to be that uh, when you when you want to apply to several schools you have to pay for each of them because the university in nigeria would need to send those transcripts to um, those schools and that's going to be expensive okay uh, the last time i i applied for my transcript okay that was 2016 how much did i pay i paid on etx and it was even quite cheap then i paid eleven thousand plus but even at that imagine i needed to apply to three four schools to four schools for instance okay i would need to pay forty four thousand because i pay eleven thousand they sent to that school pay again and that's so much and remember today's session is we're looking at if i can pay for the four thousand then i'm no longer from you 
from from a from a not rich family okay and today's session we are looking at how you can actually study overseas even if you are not from a very rich family okay so the goal is we're gonna see how can we you know pass through these hoarders and save cash that is scarce okay so that when since we we don't have so much of it we can still find our way around and that's what i'm going to tell you okay but first um take note etx dash ng.com first if you do not have your transcript you're done with school you need to get it now 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 okay so what i did then and this was how i broke i i, I went around it what i did then was um i i went on etx ng then i applied for my transcript but I did not apply as though the as though it was a school that needed it because if I did that, they, they're going to send it directly to the school. Okay, and if I needed to apply again, I'll need to pay again, and I didn't want that. So what I did was that I applied using a company. Okay, I applied using a company that okay, a company is the one who needs this transcripts, and that was really that that's that was really um the the situation of things at then. But the good thing was that I had a good relationship with the owner of the company. Okay, so relationship helps a lot. I had a good relationship with the owner of the company and I requested on ETX attendee because on ETX you can request for soft copy of your transcript or hard copy of your transcript. So I requested for soft copy. The reason is because I didn't trust Nigeria's postal system. I, I didn't have so much trust in, in that postal system. So I felt if I request for the hard copy, I don't want to now say, oh, it, um, University of Virginia say, oh, we've, we've sent your, your document and then this issue because it got missing the way so i just felt that oh soft copy will be easy because they'll just need to send it to the email okay so there's less uh, <clears throat> issue of the, with that getting lost so i requested for a soft copy and i requested for it as though it was a company who needed it not a school because i'm telling you if you request for it as a school they are going to send it directly to the school and if you need to apply to another school you have to pay again and it's going to be a lot of money okay so i requested for it as it was a company that was in need of it. And like I said, I had a very good relationship with that company. Now, it still took time. Normally, it was not supposed to take so much time. I think with ETX, they told me, because when you apply, they'll tell you the range of um, <clears throat> period in which you should expect the transcript. I think it was supposed to take like three to six weeks or so, but I think they were having a couple of issues that period. And it took me three months. I'm telling you, three months. And just imagine if I did not apply for my transcript ahead of time, I would have missed my admission. Because the transcript is about the most important document you need for your admission. I think it's the most important, actually. It's the most important because it details all, all your courses, uh, the courses you did, your grades, and on what have you not just your certificate i mean your certificate is just one paper but they need you know they need the details of your car of your of your grades and all that so it took me over three months okay that even after paying to etx i had to send email to etx say why is my transcript not here yet they'll tell me oh they've already gone to uniben they've gone to my department i mean one thing or another i would have to go to uniben the people, folks i knew in exams and record i'll have to talk to them we kept going for um, on 14 on 4, but the good thing was that finally I got my transcript and it was sent to the company to the company okay there's a question okay no problem what, what's gonna happen is um, what we're gonna do is for your question start your question with Q all right just start with Q then put a column and then write your question so that at the end of it I can take all the questions okay so if you have a question just start it with capital letter Q column and then write your question and then at the end of the session i'll take the question so i do not break the focus i just saw a, a very good question from albert just now i'm going to answer your question and so henceforth everybody who asks has a question please just start with the capital letter q and then you write your question at the end of the day uh, <clears throat> i'll take all the questions one minute please okay yeah another question from uzo but please um even please start your question with q so that when I'm going through, I can easily know the questions and I'm going to answer answer all your questions. So if you have a question, just start it with Q, capital letter Q, colon, and then you write your question so that when I go through all the comments, I can just easily filter out um, the questions and attend to them. Okay. <clears throat> so like I was saying, so I had a good relationship with the owner of the company. And so when they sent it to the company via email, um, because of my relationship, he sent me a copy, and so that's how I had a copy of my transcript. Okay, I had a copy of my transcript, and so I was able to make multiple applications. However, this is the other thing when your university um, 
um, sends out your transcript, they usually address it directly to who is requesting it. So if it's a company who is requesting it, at the front page, you will see it, instead of being in transcript addressed to the right name of the company, okay? If it's a, if it's a um, university that is requesting it, they are going to address it directly to the university. And so when I got a copy of, of the transcripts, um, there was still an issue. I could not send it like that to my university, to the university I was applying for, because on the transcript, on the very first page, it was addressed to the, um, to the company. Okay, so what I did was I used a software called um, PDF Splitter. I think it's called PDF Splitter. Anyway, you can check Google. Okay, it's just to split PDFs. All right, I'm just give, I'm telling you all my hacks. Okay, I'm just letting everything out. I'm not holding anything back. Okay, I used a software called I think PDF Splitter or something. But just check if you type on Google how to split pdf pages you see it you can even do it online so i use that software to split out the first page so i took out the first page because it was only the good thing is that it was only the first page that was addressed okay only the first page that was addressed to um <clears throat> to the company so i used the um, pdf software splitter to remove that first page and the good thing was that from the second page, the second page still contained my name, which was the most important thing to attest that that document was mine. Okay, and I was really glad because if the second page did not contain my name, it would have been a problem. Okay, but the second page still contained my name and the university logo and everything. It was only the first page that contained the name of the company. Okay, and so I used that software to split it out, remove it, and then the second page still contained my name and all the details. So that second page till the last page became my transcript and that was how i was able to send to multiple schools apply to multiple schools without having to pay okay so this is the first hack and just this hack can save you over forty thousand naira. i mean and this is cheap because i think now um, to apply for a transcript may be a bit more because even in 2016 2017 when i applied for for the transcript um i knew i knew a couple of friends who applied for jazz who had to pay thirty thousand twenty five thousand okay and i know a lot of people that uh, because of the fact that for you to apply to multiple schools you need to apply for multiple transcripts that alone discouraged a lot of people because they cal calculated the money that means if i want to apply to four schools or three schools i need to pay i need to have ninety thousand or 100k okay that already discouraged people so just this little hack i gave you can save you over a hundred thousand okay or even more because you can apply to different schools if you want okay so before we continue, I want to know, are you following, are you getting value or am I too fast? I would lo love to see um, your response if you do not mind. I will answer all the questions, so please just keep um, dropping your questions. I think what I'll do is that after speaking on every major point, I will answer all the questions on that point. So I'm, I'm actually done with um, talking about your transcripts now. So I will answer all the questions about transcripts before I'll move on to the next point. So if you have, if you have all, if you have all, uh, any question about transcript, please, this is the right time to just um, write it now. I will give um, one minute to drop all your questions and then I'll answer all the questions in transcript and then we'll move on to the next hack. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your feedback. Thanks for all the kind words. Okay, so I'll take I'll start taking the questions now. Uh, so the first question I see here is um, is from is from Albert Egage. So Albert is asking, sorry about those of us not attached to a company. Okay, you do not need to be attached to a company because nobody's going to do a research to see if you are the company or not because it could be that the company, you went for the interview, okay? And that's very possible. You went for the interview and the company is saying before they employ you, they need to get your transcript and that's possible and that happens always, okay? So you do not need to be attached to the company. You just need to have a good relationship with a company with any I mean, any company at all okay such that and of course the company should have an official email okay the company email or something because if you need a soft copy and then they can send it to that company but you do not need to be attached to the company okay i think i hope that answers it you just need to have a good relationship with maybe the owner of the company or something so that when they send it to the company they can send you the company can give you a copy of it 
okay so from uzo uzo even saying okay thanks for this does your grades matter though like what you graduated with and all okay this is a very very good question and please i want all of us to listen to it does your grade matter <clears throat> at all in getting an admission the truth of the matter is yes okay if you want to get a master's degree your grades matters because um and that's the next point i'm going to go to how to get schools in germany how to source for schools in germany okay because when you go through schools different schools have different requirements and different courses also has different requirements for some courses they'll tell you your grade has to be between this level and this level now in germany they use a slightly uh, different grading system from what we are used to in Nigeria. I know in Nigeria, the majority of the schools, we have um, a CGPA system from 1.0 to 5.0. Okay. And in Nigeria, no, is it 5.0? Yeah, 5.0. 5 5.0. I want to 5.0. To and in Nigeria, if you have a 5.0, that's the highest grade. That means you have maybe all A's or something very good. Okay. And 5.0 is first class. In Nigeria, 4.5 to 5.0 is first class and all of that. In Germany, it's the opposite, okay? In Germany, if you have a 5.0, that's failure, okay? If you fail a course, you have a 5.0, so it's the opposite. And then if you have a 4.0, that means it's quite poor. Maybe you had, maybe you are 50% or 60%, okay? 1.0 in Germany is the highest grade, so it's opposite. While 1.0 in Nigeria, it's really poor. In Germany, 1.0 means your grades were like 95% to 100%. So there's a calculator. If you Again, if you check online how to convert CGPA grades, this scale to Germany scale, you see it online. Okay, so the point is a lot of schools will tell you their requirements um, for getting an admission. And, um, <clears throat> and yes, so yet yeah, grades are a factor but the good thing is that do not give up because while one school may say if you do not have up to this grade we cannot offer you admission this other school may ask for a lower grade and so that's why the major uh, thing you need to do is to search okay you have to search for schools that you meet their requirements because at the moment you cannot change your grades okay if i was speaking to folks who are in 100 level 200 level i'll tell them Take your grade seriously, because I'm going to say grades no matter. Well, it depends on what you want to do. Later on in life, your grades could help, okay? But if you're already out of school, I can't. you can't change your grades. What you can do is that you can find the opportunities um, that you can take advantage of with your grades, and they are bound. Okay, so even if you go through schools and the schools, their requirements, you do not meet it. I want to encourage you, do not be discouraged. Keep searching, okay? Keep searching, keep looking at other schools, keep looking at other courses, okay? And then you'll be able to see the one that uh, <clears throat> your grade fits in. Okay, um, so there's another question from Yvonne Okaifo. He says, but how will you get the transcript? When you don't have a company working with you and you want to jump. okay are you with me okay it's, i'll go again it says but how would you get the transcript when you don't have a company working with you and you want the transcript in time to begin your application okay um well if you do not have a company working with you you have to find one you need you should if you do not have a company working with you personally you could have i'm telling you what the, the means i think is the fastest you could have a friend who has a company or something you could have a relative and you just need to use a company name okay and you'll be able to get it the other option is if you have connections you know a person in your school different universities have different uh, procedures too okay if you have um, connections in your school or probably your school is faster i don't know i don't know how the system works now in nigeria with different schools for some schools it may be faster it may be easier because i know a friend who um, attended a, a, a um a private school in nigeria and she got her her transcript in like one or two weeks she used etx2 and she did not have to do any of this of course she used my style to use the company but she got it really fast okay so if you do not have a company you can have you will have a friend who has a company or you will have a friend who has a friend that has a friend that has a company or you have a relative who has a friend who has a relative that has a company some hustle might you just need it and it's it, it's faster for you because the idea is when it's sent to the company you just send it to you and that's all okay or if you have a if you have a very good connection in your school then you can ask them to help you out and and yes that just works okay another question from steven he says does the company requesting for the transcript have to be registered with cc very good question 
and um, so far I found that no they do not have to be because nobody actually checks them out because in Nigeria you do not have to be registered with CAC before you can employ somebody. Okay, there are a lot of companies who are functioning in Nigeria who are not registered with CAC, but yet the company could also have their procedures and say, before we employ anybody, we want to verify their grades. So, so they do not need to be registered with CAC. But of course, if you are registered with CAC, it's always a plus because uh, maybe they can see your registration number. But so far, I don't think it's an issue. Okay, another question from Ungozi. Say, can I send copies of my personal transcript to the schools I might be interested in, or is it only the official copy I can send? Um, Ungozi, most of the schools I have found that is that they request the official copy. Almost all the schools have found that they request the official copy, not the personal copy. So that's why it's quite interesting. That's why usually what they do is that the schools send it directly to those schools. And if they're going to send it directly to the schools, then it would not be your personal copy. And you know the good thing about Germany too, is that Germany does not request that your school sends them the transcript. The only request, okay, we'll get there. The only request that you attest the documents, and we'll talk about attestation. But some other schools in, in the US and Canada, for instance, they will insist that only your school can send them so in that way my dear you can't do anything okay if you're going to apply to three schools in canada or the u.s for instance you have to pay those money separately and i think i think sometimes you also have to pay sending fees so it's just a lot of expensive but germany does not insist on that germany just tells you we want attestated uh, copies that means you just need to um, stamp them at the court of law we'll come to that yep so they usually request official copy Thank you for all the feedback and all the kind words. Okay, um, Funke says a friend of mine will need this video. Okay, um, when we're done, I uh, will talk about how we can get a replay. It will either be here or it will be on my YouTube page. Um, I'm not sure yet. Okay, anti charity said 4.0 to 5.0 is first class here. Okay, so yes, that is in that's in US. So different schools, different um countries have different grading system. And the good thing is that you can always convert from one to another. Okay, um Kalista says um uh Sagidion, do I need to write LTS or OET English test to gain admission? All right, very good question. That's the next that's the next point we are coming to. Okay, I think we're done with the transcript. So we've taken note. First point, get your transcript now. Get your transcript now. Okay, so the second point, after I have my transcript, then how do I search for schools? And that's why I'm going to answer Kalista's questions and a number of questions. Now, there is a site. Germany makes it quite easy. There is a site where you can search for schools. In fact, that site, I think it's just the, it's the bomb. Okay, that site is the key to every single thing. It's amazing how one single site can just be the answer. Yeah, a lot of people do not know the site, but I'm gonna tell you for free. I'm gonna type it right there and explain how you can make the best use um, from that website and get everything you need. I mean, from, from, from start to finish. So I'm gonna type it now. The site is called www.dad.de. Okay. All right. So that's the website. I just typed it www.dad. D -A -D D -E. Now, dad is like the, should I say Ministry of Education? You know, the way we have Ministry of Education in Nigeria, but I don't think it probably covers it. But dad is really, dad is the education body in germany okay they're in charge of scholarships they're in charge of courses they're in charge of international programs and all that and they have a website so that's the website www.dad.d please save that website very key however um if you open that if you were to open that website now you see that it's in german okay because of course germany they speak german okay and i understand a lot of us here we do not understand german so what you could do is you could open that website with google chrome Okay, do not open with Opera, do not open with uh, Mozilla, Firefox, and all those things. Open the website with Google Chrome. Why? Because Google Chrome um, offers you the... Um, <clears throat> It offers you the option of changing the language automatically. So if you open that website with Google Chrome, either on your phone or a laptop, you'll be able to translate the page to English. Okay, most times when you open it, it automatically brings up a prompt in and gives you an option. Do you want to translate to English and then you can easily click English? Okay, or if that does not happen, if you're using your phone, you can go to settings and on settings, you can go to language and on language from language, you can click on um, um, 
what it's called language you can click to always translate and then it translates it to english okay so yeah please that site is very key so when you go on that site you see a lot of things i will encourage you that after this um after this time i just go on the site just read through you're going to see a lot of information but i'm just going to talk about just a little portion of the site which relates um <clears throat> to what we what we are dealing with today however the site um, speaks a lot more than just what i'm going to be talking about today so how can you get courses when you click on www.dad.de and you convert to english um i wrote it here so you click on that there's when you go down i don't know how it's gonna be if you're using a phone or a laptop but just go to a place you're gonna see um an option called study command research study command research okay so when you click on study and stroke research you're gonna click on in germany because there will be option do you want to study are you looking for studies in germany or in ab or abroad Okay, that's what that's the way it's written on the side if you click on germany you know just read once you read you'll be able to find yourself around because at the end of the way we are going to is international programs so you just find your way around i think maybe on the site you can also search international programs and it just takes you directly to that link okay but i think from the home page of the site from the home page of the site you go to study call my research and teaching then you click then you go to in germany then you click and you go to study programs and language courses okay then you click, then you go to international programs, and that's where we are going to. So anywhere you can find yourself, just find the link called international programs. Okay, international programs. I think, like I said, when you click on that site, you convert to English. There should be a search button where you can just search international programs. Okay, but this is how you can easily get it from the home page. Study, research, and teaching. I'm going um, over it once again. Study, research, and teaching. Then you click in Germany. Then click study programs and language courses. And then it takes you to international programs. Um, in fact, let me open it right here so I could flow along with you. Um, www.dads.de. Okay, um, while I'm at that, um, Mercy is asking, will you be allowed to work while studying? Yes, yes, I answered that earlier. Germany allows you to work for um, an average of 20 hours a week while you're on study, while you're on in session. So yeah, you'll be allowed to. Um, Ibu Kun says she cannot hear me. Is that true? Can everybody hear me? Please confirm as though I know I'm not talking to myself. Can, can others hear me? Okay, so sir, so she can hear me. Thank you for the response. So you cool. I think maybe the issue is from your end. I think other people can hear me. Okay, okay. Thank you, Stephen. So you cool. I think you should check your phone. All right, thank you, Auntie Charity. All right. So so yes. So when you go to um, study. Okay, let's go again. Let's go through it. Um, I'm gonna drop the name of my YouTube channel after this. I'm gonna drop the name of my. Um, Okay, so are we on the site? Okay, this may be, be difficult for us. But anyway, just follow me. Just listen to me. That's the most important thing. You will get, we'll find a way to get you the, the, the stuff after now. Okay, okay. The way this is, okay, sorry, let's go. So from the home page, because I just had to go to the website now. So from the home page, once you click www.dad.de, then you go to courses of study in Germany. Okay, once you go down, you see courses of study in Germany. <clears throat> you see courses of study in Germany. Then once you click courses of study in Germany, then you click international programs. In fact, it's the first is the first thing you see international programs. Okay, like I said, there are a lot more things here, and if you have time, just go through the entire site. Okay, so but once you click on international program, it takes you to a place like a search engine, and this is really interesting. So in this search engine, you see the first you can search for your programs. So you see different um <clears throat> different filters. Okay, you can search based on your course type, based on your course language, because Germany offers courses in English, and that's great. So even though um the language here, yeah, the primary language here yeah, is Germany, but for the international programs, you can get programs 
that are taught solely in English. And so that's really great for you. So you can search for such programs. So when you click on, when you come to this international programs, you see course language, for instance, there's the option of German only. Do you want a course that's only taught in German? Do you want a course that is only taught in English? Do you want a course that is taught in both German and English or others? Then let's assume you want only English. Okay, so you click English only. All right, then you select your course type. Are you looking for a bachelor's degree? Like that's why I said the things I'm saying applies to even bachelor's degree. So if you're looking for a bachelor's degree, let's say you you don't have a bachelor's degree yet in Nigeria, or you had one but you want to get another one. Okay, you click on bachelor's. Are you looking for a master's degree? You already have a bachelor's degree in Nigeria, and you want a master's degree? You click on master's. Are you looking for a PhD? You click. Are you looking for cross faculty? You know there are different stuff, or you just want a short course. So depending, so let's say you want a master's degree, you click master's degree, you know, I wish I could share this, my screen with you, but the thing is I'm not using my laptop for this, but it's okay. Then field of study for field of study, you click your field of study. Are you into medicine? You want a course in medicine? They have different options here. Yeah, they have agriculture, forestry and nutritional sciences. They have art. They have engineering languages law economics social science mathematics medicine sport veterinary medicine so i think basically um, all course of studies that contain here so you just click on your course of study your field of study then you search okay and then when you search it brings out the list of schools okay it brings out the list of schools that meet your search criteria okay it brings out the list of schools that meets your search criteria and then this is where it gets interesting you can go through each of the schools go through their requirements because once you click on the schools what happens is that it brings out a place called it has overview services and requirements okay so you can click on each of the schools you go through their requirements and you see the admission process and everything is just laid bare for you okay I want to go through this again because I think maybe you may not have gotten the point because this is actually very key. So what you need to do, after you've already applied for your transcript, transcript and it's on its way, you need to search for schools, okay? You need to search for schools. And to search for schools, go to that website, www.dart.de. Find your way to the link called International Programs, okay? Once you're in International Programs, it brings like a search engine. So depending on what you want, okay, depending on what you want, if you want to study, if you want, if you have interest in masters or bachelors or engineering or whatever, just fill those links, um, fill those um, fields, okay, fill those fields and search. Once you click on search, it brings out all the schools available in Germany, okay, it brings out all the schools available in Germany that meets your search criteria. And then you will take out your time to go through each and every one of those schools. Go through, through each and every one of those schools, see their overview. Because in the overview, you see if it's free tuition. Because again, not all schools in Germany are free tuition. Not all. Okay, but a majority of them are free tuition. Okay, a majority of them are free tuition. And then you go through each and every one of them. See the ones that are free tuition. See the ones that you need to pay for. Okay. You see, so in that in this website for each of the school, you will also see the admission date because the thing is you have to go through each school because each school has their own requirements. So there's no one size fits all. Okay, some schools may say, okay, we take admission summer and winter. That's maybe maybe we take admission April and October. Another school says no, we take admission only September. So another school says, okay, you can apply between January and March. So there's no one size fits all. So what you need to do is that just go through each of the schools, see what is unique to them. Because okay, so when you go through each of the schools, you just need to take our time, read it. Okay, read, just read. Once you can read that, everything is fine. Just read. See, you, you read through the overview. It's on the, other, on the overview. You see when you're supposed to apply, when the admission um, window is open. You will see the requirements. Okay, you see the requirements. You will see um, all of those, all of those things. Okay, so I'm, so I'm going to answer different questions now. Now, for some schools, some schools we require that um, you, <clears throat> you, um, some schools, before I will answer the questions in the comment, but I just want to answer some questions that just came to my head. So, some schools will require that you write an English exam, for instance. They may require that you have to, part of their requirement is TOEFL. 
don't argue if you don't want to write to fail no need for you to grumble what should you do move on to the next school okay move on to the next school okay move on to the next school and see then search out for the school that does not require to fail as a requirement okay so if you do your search engine and probably 10 schools come out you can further streamline it to five or to four or to three and so this is what i advise you to do after this go through these sites get a book get a book okay just call it anything go through these sites search for the courses that you have interest in okay see all the list of the schools write out all the list of the schools one by one for all of them write out their requirements okay write out their admission um windows and all of that so the requirements you do not have yet ticket so that for instance if one school says okay the requirement for our admission is a transcript is your um, bachelor's certificate it's maybe your cv maybe an english exam for instance okay and you have bachelor's certificates you have this you do not have english exam ticket so that you know that okay the only thing i need to work on now is my um english exam for instance if you want to go to that school so what this helps you do is that it helps you to start you know you are more focused you are more structured okay you start thinking this out okay i'm done with this the next step is this and that all right so what i want you to do like i said go through each of the schools write them out write out all their requirements okay write out their um their timeline and so that you can you can work towards it so if the timeline maybe the admission window is already passed you can know when the next one is reopening okay and if you know when the next one is reopening and you know the requirements that you do not have yet you can find a way you can you can map out a structure on how you could get those requirements before those time you know you can be very deliberate okay you can mark out a a way on how you could get requirements before that time and you start working towards it okay so yes that's easy so that's the, this is what i just said now it's like 50 percent of the job or maybe 70 percent of the job if you're able to identify schools you're able to identify their requirements you also are able to identify the admission process because for some schools they'll tell you to make the ap application you need to send the documents directly to them so that means when you get all your documents they will tell you you need to attest your documents so i'm going to give a couple of examples of requirement that some schools we ask so that you are familiar with it okay some schools we ask you to attest your documents to attest your document is easy it's not difficult all the documents they required you to submit let's say they required you to submit your bachelor's certificate your transcripts what else bachelor's certificate transcripts let's say just those two okay of course you are not going to send them your original documents please don't send them your original document so please don't send them your original certificate or your original um um what's it called transcript that's going to be an issue what you do is you make colored photocopies of those things so that it looks a bit original to make colored photocopies of the documents they require from you of you and then you take it to a court of law okay any court of law in nigeria and just tell them you want to attest this document okay when i attested my document i attested my documents in, in lagos there's a court in sabo if i remember correctly and it was not so expensive i can't remember i think i have tested one document for 500 naira or so okay at the end of the day i'm not sure i spent up to 3000 naira okay you have to attest the documents because attesting the document it shows that okay these documents they are original you know they are original even though i'm sending photocopies you know they can stand in the place of the original so you have to attest usually in the court of law okay so you just take it you are testing the court of law so attesting is like stamping they stamp it they put this their seal they sign some stuff and it's that so those are the documents you will now post so you can keep your original documents okay so some schools like i said some schools will require that for the admission process you have to <clears throat> post your documents directly to them okay so when you attest the original the photocopies you have to send it to them you can use any postal service well i will not advise you to use night post okay one minute i'll not advise you to to use night post because <clears throat> night post can be quite funny all right sometimes your documents will not get there in, in two months in one month and then before you know um the admission time is over just because documents did not get there on time okay so well and the government can get lost what our advice is i usually advise you to use 
other courier services like DHL, FedEx, or something. Okay, so you post it directly to the school. Okay, yeah, and and that's the application process. There's some schools we ask you to apply online. If I that's sweet, because applying online, I don't need to post my documents to them. I just apply online. While some schools we ask you to apply through an admission body. Please take note. Listen to this. So there are usually three ways they ask you to apply, depending on the school. Some schools tells you to tell you to apply directly to them, so you send hard copies documents to them. That's very common. Some schools they ask you to apply online. This is not very common, but there are some schools like that. So you just don't have to apply online. Maybe upload your documents to them. That's quite easy because you don't spend money. While some schools we ask you to send your documents to apply through an admission body, which is called Uni Assist. Okay, Uni Assist. U N I then assist okay it's, a, it's an admission body here in germany that is involved in um and um <clears throat> finalizing admission into the university so some schools they don't want to um relate directly with applicants they want to relate directly with that body called union assist so in that case they will tell you to apply directly to union assist so you have to send your documents to union assist the union assist will now be the one to apply and usually that's more expensive because you have to pay uni assist too. Okay, it's expensive, but it's affordable. I mean, of course, the word expensive is relative. I mean, it's more expensive relative to, you know, if I if I wanted to apply directly myself or if I wanted to apply online. So usually those are the three ways. So like I said, when you search on this website, look at all the schools, see their mode of app of, of application, okay, see the one that fits, okay, and then you just apply. You know, the thing about getting an admission in Germany is just follow instruction simple follow instructions simple if they ask you send five photocopies don't go and send four <laughs> don't go and send four and start praying that ah lord touch their mind don't do that if they ask you send five photocopies send five photocopies and you will get it all right if you are able to read you are able to know their requirements and follow their instructions to the latter you are fine so i think the major thing is some people are just they don't want to read okay if you're able to read take out time see the requirements the one you do not meet find a way to meet it and then you apply you'll be fine so if they tell you apply to uni assist please don't want to send them directly because it does not work like that if they tell you apply online please don't go and send them through uni assist so simple just follow instructions if you cannot follow the instructions for that school please don't apply to that school look for another school whose instructions it's easy for you to follow okay so yeah so <clears throat> So yeah, basically that's it. I think I've explained this point a lot. So like I said, some schools ask for TOEFL. Okay, but one, one thing I found that is that some schools that ask for TOEFL, some of them will also say if English is your first language. Now, this is a major argument. Okay, people, a lot of people argue all over the world. Is English the first language of Nigeria? Why do Nigerians have to write um, English tests? Well, it's a, it's a dicey one, okay? I could be in any of the divide, but what I'll just tell you is that for schools that require TOEFL, and they also say, well, if you are from an English-speaking country, you do not need to write maybe TOEFL ILTS. What I advise you to do is you could write, you could get the email of the school and write directly to them and let them know that you studied your bachelor's, you did your bachelor in English, and so sometimes they will agree that, okay, you should provide a document that confirms that you did your bachelor in, in English. And that's cheaper than writing any of the English exams. Okay, that's cheaper than writing any of the English exams. So usually you just have to go to your university. It's called letter of instruction. I think, yeah, that's what it's called, letter of instruction. So it shows that you studied in English something about instruction but just go to your school all right and say you need a document to show that you studied in english so usually with that document that document can replace TOEFL or ILTS with a lot of schools not all schools or some schools we still insist that you write your ILTS on TOEFL but for a lot of schools in germany if you can bring that um, language of okay i think i remember it's called language of instruction document if you can provide that language of instruction document it's not so expensive i think when i in, in nigeria in uniben i don't know maybe three thousand four thousand to get it you know, it's better than going to register to fill for maybe i don't know how much to face now maybe sixty thousand seventy thousand or ILTS too. Okay, so this is another hack. So do not just rush to go and register for TOEFL because I made that mistake. But when I was coming to um, Germany, I thought, because actually on the website, they said TOEFL, then they said, if you speak English, I just thought, well, they don't count Nigeria 
among. So I I I wrote I wrote to Phil. Okay, it was okay. But when I came to Germany, I found a friend of mine from Nigeria too. And we were discussing. I was like, oh, how far? How was your TOEFL? He said he didn't write TOEFL. I was like, seriously? And you're here? He told me yes, that he, he's, he used that document, that language of instruction document that shows that he did his bachelor's in English. Okay, and that was how he got the admission. So yes, so do not just be discouraged when you see them ask for TOEFL or ILTS. Um, find out. Find out if um they accept language of instruction and a lot of times a lot of times right for germany a lot of times they do accept language of instruction documents so and that's pretty easy to get so i think i've exhausted a lot of things i wanted to see on this particular session i think i have one or two more sessions to go but before i move on i'll just quickly go through all the questions there are a couple of questions here and i'll quickly answer all of them and then we can move on to the last session and then we can round off. <clears throat> okay, I already answered Ngozi's question. Will you be allowed to work whilst you study? Yes, you're allowed to work for like 20 hours and that's enough to cover your bills and maybe save a couple. Okay, um, okay so let me see. What's the name of your YouTube channel, please? Um, I'm going to post it. I'm going to share it here afterwards. Um, Okay, next question. Okay, Albert Egage said, LTS, OET, SAT, TOEFL, compulsory. So I think I already answered it. So there is no one fit all, okay? There's no one fit answer for everything. Like I said, each school has their own requirements. So that's why this website is very key for you. Okay, so you are the one who has to take the responsibility to go through every each of the schools. Some schools will tell you, you must write SAT. In fact, I remember there was one school that told me when I was searching, said, you must write GL, GROE and ILTS. And I was like, man, I don't have money for that. So I said, okay, I'm not applying to this school. I went to another school. And I went to another school. I saw another school that did not require that. Okay, so for some schools, it's compulsory. For some, it's not compulsory. Okay, and I already gave you a hack for the English proficiency exams. For a lot of them, if once you studied in English, you can provide a, la a language of instruction document that helps. Okay, so really there's nothing compulsory. It depends on the school. So search, look at each school one by one. Okay, focus on each school one by one. See their own unique requirements. See if you can meet it. If you love the school, if you can meet the requirements. If you don't have the requirements now, see how you can work towards getting them or look for no other schools that you meet their requirements. Okay, I hope that answers. Okay, another question. Uh, Steven says, can one switch fields entirely like from international relations to computer science? Good question. Again, the website answers you. Okay, because when you go, when you search for each school, under their requirements, they will tell you maybe they need, they only need people who have background in certain areas. Okay, sometimes some, 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 um, some courses, they will tell you, Okay, for this course, you do not necessarily need to have a background in maybe, let's say the course is related to political science. They'll say you do not need to write, need have a background in political science. That's good. Okay, but some schools will insist that you must have a background in this area. Okay, again, you have to go through each of the school. So some schools, depending on the programs, depending on the course, they allow anybody. Okay, even if you do not have a background in that area, okay, you are allowed to come in. Again, you go through each of the school and you see the courses. Okay, <clears throat> um, Jake says, I do have the half standard pilot. Yeah, uh, well, you have to go through all the courses for pilots. It should be something under engineering. And so you have to search under engineering. And also you can also search the course directly. Maybe you can set pilots or something. Okay, and see if they offer that course. If they do, then that's good. You, you see the requirement. If they don't, then you may have to look for other courses that they do offer if you're interested in Germany. Okay, anti charity acts are international students eligible for financial aid. Okay, no, in Germany, no, international students are not eligible for financial aid. However, international students are not required to pay school fees. So, in my opinion, I think that's already enough financial aid because if you had to pay school fees, it would have been in tens of thousands of euros. But our tuition is completely free, so you do not pay school fees at all. So, I think that's the financial aid they provide for you, and also they provide a good atmosphere where you can work even as a student 
and earn money for your bills and maybe it leads you to save too okay but apart from that they do not give that extra financial aid where they give you stipend i think that that's only av available for um, german students and european students so for international students apart from getting the free tuition for your bills you either come with money or you have to work so that you cater for your bills <clears throat> okay um fred asks when does admission open for application yeah i think i already answered that different schools have their unique um, <clears throat> um application admission dates so once you search you go to the overview the requirements they will write it there they'll tell you between this and this is where we receive admission so it's unique for schools chinwe asks by free tuition does it mean that i will not pay i will study at no cost at all it means you will not pay school fees okay so um however you pay something called student registration every semester but that student registration it's not it's not it's not large at all i think for some schools it's just like 250 euros for six months and the thing is that that student registration covers your transports your transportation for the whole of that semester okay so for six months are around that city with all the buses and all the trains and all the okay here we have something called trams once you pay that student enrollment fee uh, i just called it that um you are able to have free transportation around okay so for me i think it's not natural because if i was to be paying for the bus fare i would spend almost that same amount okay so it's just like student registration and it's not expensive again when you search this website each of the schools will tell you how much is their registration per semester okay and that's just 250 euros and if you come here and you're working 20 hours a week or 15 hours per week you should be able to save more than that before the next six months where you have to register so you just like registration fee for the semester that's the only thing you pay okay that's the only thing you pay and that's that's nothing at all and it called like i said it covers your transportation throughout the semester now jay says sir you didn't mention aviation among the list of courses on the website i want to ask this is available well aviation I, I i just read what i saw here aviation is not directly available but however of course aviation is can be placed under engineering so when you click on engineering it will open because that's field of studies so under engineering you should check you, you can check after now if there's aviation i've never really checked it out but aviation should be under engineering so when you click on engineering you see if the offer courses related to aviation okay <clears throat> fred says <clears throat> sorry one second okay fred says i learned that those schools have tuition free in germany but the amount you must have in your account for upkeep in order to get visa to germany is the sum of three million and both how true is this all right very good question and that's the next point i'm coming to after you've gotten the admission how you get your visa okay and so i will answer your question they're very good question so please just take note i'm going to answer the question in my next session which is about how to get your visa so felix says who will pay for your flight and visa money <laughs> okay i'll answer that next to like after getting your admission we're going step by step because first first step is get your school make your application get your admission they will not talk about how to get your visa and then when you get your visa about arriving Okay, Ungozi says, I heard schools outside the country do not take NECO results. How true is this? Do they even ask for one's whole level? Uh, do you know this is a very good question? Because I've asked myself, when I applied for my master's, did they require my whole level? I'm not sure. I can't really remember. I think it was just my bachelor's they required. Again, each school is different. So when you go through the school, uh, you see their requirements you see if they ask for your high school certificate or they just said your bachelor's degree and your transcripts if that's just it then you don't need to submit it okay you don't need to submit it if not i think they will if they ask for your high school and neko is what you have then you submit neko if you have waek then submit waek ahead of neko because waek is west africa neko is just nigeria okay but if you do not have waek then you can't do anything submit your neko okay if they ask for it but again you have to look at the requirements sometimes they do not ask anything about your high school they just focus especially if you are applying for your master's but of course if you're applying for your bachelor's you need your high school because that's your uh, <clears throat> last level of of education so you need your your um 
you need your high school degree and if you have WIAC, I always advise you to use your WIAC ahead because it covers a wider span West Africa compared to just Nigeria. But if you do not have a WIAC, then man, you have to apply with NECO. Okay, Steven says, how does one assess, get access to the uni assess platform? Again, <laughs> everything is on this website because when you go, when you click search for the schools and they bring out the schools, if you look at the overview, if the school requires that you apply to uni assist, they will give you the link of their own unique uni assist. Okay, so everything is just it's just clearly spelled out. If the school's um, admission process requires you to apply to uni assist, then you see the link there. Okay, you see the link that takes you to um, <clears throat> the the page of the uni assist and, and then you just follow through. So once you click there, it takes you to uni assist or even now you can browse Google uni assist, you see uni assist, you can read about them. Okay, that's if the school requires you. Okay, I think it's the same question. Do BEM, AB, ask, how do you get uni assist? Okay, it's the same thing. If the school requires you uni assist from the website, you're going to see a link that takes you there. So when you get there, because again, uni assist is unique to depending on the university, because some university asks for more documents, some ask for less. Okay, so depending on the particular university, uni assist tells you how to progress. So, like I said, for Germany, it's just simple. Just follow instruction and you'll be good. If Uni Assist tells you for this um for this um university, we want you to send, for instance, two copies of 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 your bachelor's and one copy of your transcript. Don't go and start arguing and say, ah, but my friend sent only one copy. No, because that's a different school. <laughs> okay. Once you follow instructions, you always be fine. And the instructions are always unique. Okay, so once you go to the particular school, it takes you to the, it, it sends you to the link. It sends you a link um, that connects you to uh, the Uni Assist page. And then you just reach to find out what they want. The ones you don't have, take out time, find, try to get it. And once you have it, everything packaged together, find out how they want you to send to them too. Find out how much they want you to send. And you just follow instructions and you're good. Okay. Peter says, my daughter was shaking during the language of instruction document part. How do I get that? Okay, for the language of instruction document, you get it from your university. Okay, you could go to your university's exam and record. I think they can provide you that. Or you go to your department, okay, and tell them you need the language of instruction. Maybe your department secretary, and so they will lead you right. But for the language of instruction document, you get it directly from your university. And it's pretty easy. It's really easy. I think you can get maybe the same day or so. Okay, thank you, Kenneth. You already uh, helped me to answer. Thank you. Steven says, I'm guessing not all courses in Germany are available for international students, right? Yeah, of course, not all courses, for instance. Uh, not all courses are available for international students because not all courses are offered in English, okay? Not all courses are offered in English. Some courses are offered only in German and, and of course that is understandable I mean it's Germany that's their first language and so we're even happy that they're kind enough to offer um, courses in English but of course some other courses are only offered in German and so if you're going to study you have to have a very very good proficiency in German yes but trust me there are more than enough courses already are, um, offered for international students a wide range that you can take advantage of okay um, Mercy says, while searching, how would I know which school and has a good standard that is worth attending? Number two, will you be allowed to steal a while to work after schooling? If yes, how long? Okay, um, I will answer your first question, Mercy, now. Then your second question, I will answer it in the next session, just so that we're a bit more arranged. Because your second question is very valid too, but it's it's part of what I'm going to talk about in in the next session. Okay, which will begin very soon. So I'll say for how would I know schools that has a good standard? And I saw that in you. Okay. A very good question. Uh it's quite a tough one because of course people would say, okay, Google the school and see their rating, but ratings could be a bit misleading. So one of the simplest things is um for schools that um if you have any friend there, you could ask about it. But even that is also misleading because people will only tell you from that perspective. Because some, to some people, for instance, Uniben, I tell you Uniben, I tell you Uniben is not a good school. Somebody will tell you Uniben is the greatest school. So, I mean, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, it's just a lot of relativity. You know, that plays here when it comes to good standard or, or what have you. But I'll tell you this: every school in Germany is good enough. Okay, it's good enough. At least it's good enough. 
of course some are better than others but i think this guy is good enough so what you could easily do is that you can you can browse about it browse about the school when you browse about the school you see those who have attended it before you see how long they've been in existence because that's one thing i did when i wanted to apply to rostock because i'd never heard about the word rostock never you know i was used to university of hamburg you know the popular cities berlin munich and then i saw ham rostock like what's rostock i browsed it and i saw the school had been existing for 600 years and i saw that even this guy I studied what's his name max planck max planck attended my university <laughs> yeah several hundreds of years ago okay max planck attended my university and a couple of other person and i never knew okay so and so when i checked google i just read about it and i read about the city you know i was excited about the city i saw a couple of pictures i used google map to look at the pictures so that oh they have a beach you know just a couple of things so that's what you could do if you're skeptical about university you can just browse about it see what they've done see what they're about and if you like it then you can you can go ahead with it <clears throat> so i'll answer your question if you'll be allowed to stay a while after schooling okay, okay felix says what's the name of your school in germany i'm studying uh, i'm studying university of rostock so it one says this requirements for applying for admission are they going to be forwarded directly to the school online or to be taken to the embassy okay i think i already answered that too um the requirements are unique to different schools so when you check it the school will also tell you how to apply to them so the school some schools will tell you for us you need to apply to us directly online to the so you have to apply directly online okay but i've never seen any schools that any school that says you should go to the embassy the only thing sometimes they tell you to do in the embassy is that you cannot test your document in the embassy to show it's original. Okay, but again, if the if the school says take the document to the embassy, then please you take the document to the embassy. So at the end of this, whatever instruction the school gives, okay, the school will say apply to us directly, post it directly to us. But they say before you post it, you have to attest the document. So I already explained that to make colored photocopies and then and then you do that. Okay, thank you, Chris already answered. That different school have different unique felix says is production engineering in german universities um i wouldn't know i've not checked but again check the website <laughs> everything's website you know what i'm doing these days i'm I'm just giving you responsibility the responsibility is now on you all right whatever you want it's it's an open word you search for it you see what's there you see the courses if the courses you want are not there you have to check your second option for another course that is close to it and you just go around okay i think i've answered all the questions so i will move to the third session so let's say you've we let's say you've um you finished you finished your you finished your making your application and let's say the school has re replied you and you got your admission that's great news so the next step after getting your admission that's like maybe 70 percent or 50 percent of the work done next thing you need to do now is you need to get your um your visa okay and to get your visa you check just check the nigeria embassy in germ Germ german embassy in nigeria okay you check online i think the website is nigeria dot i wrote it out nigeria dot diplo dot d but you could just check google german embassy in lagos okay you go to the site so when you go on the site you see how to apply for visa okay of course there are different visa categories you 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 want a student visa okay you want a student visa and so they are going to ask for a couple of requirements and that's where i'm going to answer these questions now which is coming up okay about finance and the rest so to get your visa um basically germany asks for a couple of requirements which you usually have maybe your your passport photograph you need to snap some passport photographs you need to um show your documents usually you have all of those things because you already made your application but the major hurdle okay which i'm going to talk about is the proof of finance okay some people call it proof of sustenance and that's usually the major hurdle people find hard to go past and i'm going to explain that so basically germany requires that um before you get the admission you need to show that when you come over to germany you'll be able to take care of yourself all right so yes they are offering you free education but of course nobody wants you to be a liability okay they want to make sure that you are able to take care of yourself take care of your basic needs and so forth with that you need to <clears throat> you need to you know you need to show that you 
would not be stranded when you come here so you need to show proof of sustenance and there are three options and you need to show this proof of sustenance not before you get your admission you don't need it for your admission okay but it's very good you know that this is something i had and at the end of the day if i'm going to be getting my visa if i'm going to come in over i need to show this and like i said this is the major thing because every other thing they ask for i'm sure you'll be able to easily provide it okay and then you book your admit your appointment online but this proof of certain and now there are three options now the first option oh man sorry i've been sitting up for long okay so the first option is <clears throat> is what is for you to show a blocked account so what is a blocked account i will explain it very simply now um a blocked account requires that you open a german account in your name from nigeria that's easy very easy because there are different um you could go to the Ni german embassy in nigeria it's in lagos um water quarantine um on the island so you can go to the water currency um, <clears throat> Uh, embassy and then you can walk up walk into the embassy and they can open a an account which for you with Dutch bank that is that's that's actually a long journey very easy ways that you can open an account online i mean you can open an account online with um, fintiba uh, i'll i'll type it here i'll just type it fintiba.com so it's it allows you to open a german account from the comfort of your home no sorry that's wrong i didn't spread it properly let me write um finti bar um my auto my auto correct is changing it okay this is the correct one let me see if i can delete the the wrong one okay i've deleted the wrong one okay so this is the right one Fintiba. So Fintiba allows you to open a German account from your from the comforts of your home. Okay, so just go to fintiba.com. You read through, you see the requirements to open an account. I think you need a, a passport, a, a passport. Uh -huh, very important, please. You need an international passport. If you don't need an if you don't have an international passport, you need to get one now. Because international passport is also something you need for your application. Okay, not just your transcript or your certificate, you need your international passport. So please, you need to get it. Of course, you should have it. Okay, so most times, Finiba requires you to snap pictures. Just go through, it's, it's quite easy. Anyway, so you can open a German account from Nigeria. That's not easy. That's not difficult. Okay, so, but after opening the account, you are supposed to pay in a certain amount of money. Remember, I'm telling you, this is the first option. There are three options. For the proof of sustenance i'm only explaining the first option which is the blocked account option which is actually the most common okay and maybe the easiest to if you have the money of course all right so you have to open a german account and i'm saying to open a german account from nigeria is not difficult fintiba.com helps you or you just go to the german embassy in lagos and you can open one there they open one there for you so that's easy okay but after opening it you have to now pay a certain amount of money into the account now take note this account is your account it's in your name it's your money okay you have to pay a certain amount of money into the account now it's called blocked account because once you pay the money into the account it is blocked that means you cannot withdraw everything out immediately what happens is that when you now get to germany after getting your visa and when you arrive in germany it's still your money but it's just like it's just how do i explain that it's like insurance that you're not going to be stranded okay so that when you get to germany the the bank now starts paying you from your money for every 12 months so maybe they'll start paying you i don't know maybe 700 euros every month okay till the money elapses which is usually for 12 months okay so whatever money they required you to put inside the account is still your money but it's called blocked because you cannot withdraw everything at once okay you are going to be paid from it monthly you know because the whole idea is that you're not stranded so that even when you come and even if you do not get a job you know you are being paid out of it and you can take off yourself you can pay your accommodation and a couple of things okay so the money so how much do i need to block again when you go on the website german website the money is written there because i think it has changed now i think it's close to around ten thousand euros which is quite a lot of money i understand i think it's around ten thousand euros now which you need to block and so ten thousand euros in nigeria should be about four million maybe 
okay and that's a lot of money but i'm going to explain something just wait okay that's a lot of money but take note this money you are not giving it to them it's not like you're paying school fees if you're going to all the schools in other countries trust me you're going to pay way more than that as school fees and after that you still need money to take off yourself because even after paying school fees in these countries you still need money of course to, to pay your house rent and the rest okay so of course the money you're putting there is still the money you would have spent anyway okay but now you just need to put it ahead of time okay and so i think i cannot remember exactly how much it is but just check just check the okay it's like stanley's confirming it that's ten thousand euros okay so if it's ten thousand euros that's about four millionaire into putting the account okay and so so with that when you go for the interview so sometimes before you go to an interview you may already have the money by the side and i will advise you you may not need to block the account yet before the interview during the interview after the interview is over you can now tell them that okay you are you need permission from them to block the account that means everything went well so they cannot say yeah you can go ahead to block the money so then you already have the money um, somewhere and then you can pay in and block it and send them a confirmation and that may be the last thing they need and they work it out and you get your visa okay that's the first option the second option is um you can get a scholarship because at the end of the day, the whole point is to show that you can sustain yourself. So either you have money that you blocked in an account or you get a scholarship. Okay, if you have a scholarship, then you don't need to block account, block any money in the account. Because that scholarship is also proof of sustenance that shows that you can take off yourself, that you will not be stranded. Okay, so if you can get a scholarship and you should actually look at this scholarship option. Okay, especially if you think it's going to be very difficult for you to source for 4.3 million but i'm going to explain something about that 4.3 million because it's not as if somebody's going to dash you or right? it's still going to be there and you can have an agreement where you return it back monthly okay <clears throat> uh but but nonetheless speaking about the scholarship you, you can apply for a scholarship now in nigeria i know two scholarships that um that offers you the opportunity to stay in germany and they're actually very amazing because with those scholarships your flight ticket is paid I think that answers Felix's questions that who will pay your flight ticket. If you are coming with a scholarship, the scholarship body will usually pay your flight ticket. If you are coming yourself, of course, you're going to pay your flight ticket. Okay, so if you get a scholarship, it's really amazing. And I know PTDF, PTDF um, has a scholarship for Germany. They do it in, in coordination with that again. Okay, so PTDF, you can apply for PTDF scholarship and it's really great. And I pay them, um, I, pay them I think they pay them a lot as monthly stipend you know i mean relatively a lot at least enough to take care of your accommodation and a couple of other things so if you get a scholarship that's amazing okay because you do not need to block any money in your account okay and you can apply for scholarships so like i said number one is ptdf so right now be on ptdf's page find out when the next one is coming out and apply okay for ptdf i think is interview okay my friends who got it it was just interview just apply and then they call you for an interview you are able to really make your point on why you want to go for this research how it's going to benefit nigeria or africa and who knows you could get it okay and so pdf is a very good one then there's a second scholarship which is not common a lot of people in nigeria do not know about it is that so this dad you know i sent you the dad's um website so that themselves they also have a scholarship for nigerians okay but for that i think there's a little caveat I think their scholarship is for those who have worked for two years at least. I think so. You can check. Okay, but but from what I found that that's the, the caveat that you need to have worked for at least two years before you be eligible for the scholarship. Okay, so if you've worked for at least two years, you have at least two years experience, then you're eligible for that scholarship. Okay, again, check their website. You see their scholarship, that. And so those two, those are the two I know, but there are more. Okay, there are more. So you should check, always check a website called opportunitydex.org. I don't know if you know of that website, opportunitydex.org. So please always check that website, opportunitydex.org. Um, no, it's PTDF, Petroleum Training Development Form. PTDF. They always check this website, opportunity. I want to type it, opportunity desk dot org okay i'll suggest if you're on twitter please follow opportunitydex.org because every time they upload you know they always tweet about new opportunities scholarship openings around the world the tweet on um conferences grants positions um 
competitions and what have you. So try and follow um try and follow opportunitydex.org on Twitter. So and really just put them on alert so that whenever they tweet check is it a new scholarship position for this then just try and apply and also check their website okay then again just keep searching for scholarships because once you have a scholarship because trust me it's not just pretty because i can remember when i went for my interview there was a lady who came and she had a scholarship and because she had a scholarship they just gave her immediately and it was neither pdf nor dad okay so there are a lot of other scholarship options that is not so popular okay but it's there you just need to search okay so search for scholarship options available okay and then because once you get a scholarship you do not need to block the account that's the second option okay then the third option is if you have a german citizen or a german permanent resident then they can provide you with a letter and that letter is called letter of obligation okay so with that letter you know the letter just basically shows that they are going to be responsible for you if anything happens so it's, it's actually not something that's easy for people to give because if you come here and you are irresponsible then it's gonna fall back on them okay so it's something quite dicey okay but then if you have a relative or you have i don't know whatever if you have somebody who is a resident or a citizen who is willing you know to give you that letter then that letter also covers so you do not need to block an account so those are the three options so the first option is um is a blocked account second one is scholarship which i should i suggest you should start pushing from now okay from now start mapping out all the available scholarships you know see when nadia when the uh, <clears throat> the their opening dates is see the requirements start preparing ahead of it because with the scholarship it's way easier way easier because when you come you are not under pressure to work you are not under pressure to do anything and if you work you just get extra cash by the way i'm not on a scholarship because a lot of people keep asking me if i'm on a scholarship i'm not on a scholarship but i wish i was okay i mean way easier but i'm not a scholarship but then i'm also very happy about what i have like somebody already asked to okay no we're not paying fees maybe you have to go through the stuff again we're not in germany you don't pay fees we already explained that maybe you have to watch the review okay but again the scholarship we're speaking about is not for school fees because like we already established you don't pay school fees in most of the schools so the scholarship is for the stipend okay it's for the money you'll be giving you every month to take off yourself and maybe your your flight tickets too okay so those are the three options for proof of sustenance like i said um um the first the first the first option is the most common because not everybody will get a scholarship and definitely not everybody has not everybody has somebody um in germany or something however everybody can get the blocked account and i'll tell you even if you are not from even if you are not from a rich family i'll tell you how this is possible now take note the money in the blocked account you are not throwing it away you are not giving it out it's still yours okay so if you are able to you know ahead of time convince people who are close to you or work okay it's very possible in nigeria okay you can set out a 10 month target or five month target or six month target that's okay i'm going to try and save a certain amount i'm going to try to do this and that or, or you have close friends or you have family or you have families family you know people who love you or they are close to you or are committed to you you could talk to them and you guys can reach an agreement and they trust you okay they could give you the money first okay and you're able to block the account and you have an agreement that when you arrive in Germany, you start working immediately. Okay, such that when you're working, you are now you can start sending back the money to them. Okay, it's an agreement you can reach. Okay, you you can you can reach an agreement. Okay, you can reach an agreement and um, <clears throat> and then you start sending the money back to them. Okay, and and that's fine. Okay, that's fine. So I don't want you to be discouraged ahead of time. It's good you know this news now. So you start trying to apply for scholarships now and start thinking of, okay, if the scholarship does not fall through, is it going to be possible for me to raise this money and maybe find a way to, you know, refund it back? And, you know, I'm going to just going to be more focused when I come here. Okay, that's it. So when you, if you're able to get the proof of sustenance, you have maybe a 95%, 90% chance of getting um, the visa. And then when you get the visa, you should before in fact most times if the school gives you admission usually the school will tell you to apply for accommodation ahead of time so that's very important please take note applying for accommodation is very important Maybe you get the admission even before you apply for your visa apply for accommodation okay with the school 
every school has their own unique requirements, of course. Okay, so you apply for <clears throat> you apply for your accommodation, and then um, you should should get your accommodation already. And so when you're done with your interview and you get your visa, um, you get it. Okay, so somebody saying, okay, now if you blocked your account and they denied your visa, they will refund your money. That's not an issue. You refund your money. Okay, they refund your money. You can always get your money back. Yeah, but most times, that's why I said most times, it's always advisable not to block your account yet until after the interview. So during your interview, you already have the money somewhere, already have opened the German account, but don't put the money yet. That's what's advisable. So after the interview or during the interview, you ask them. So when they are done, depending on the pr this, you ask them, can you go ahead to block the account? So most times they tell you, yes, go ahead. That means your interview was sus was successful and satisfactory and there's a very maybe 95 percent chance that you'll be given okay but in this slight um <clears throat> probability that you would not be given you can always get your money back okay, that's not an issue okay so after getting after getting your visa then of course you should have already booked your accommodation ahead of time and then you can fly you can fly over to germany okay and begin your studies okay and of course i would always advise if you plan to stay in to to school in germany or maybe you want to work afterwards start learning the language now start learning the language now that cannot be overemphasized because if you know the language it decreases your chances of getting more jobs okay because you do not have to start looking for only jobs that require english you can fit in anywhere both those who require english and the ones that require german skills okay you can start learning from now okay you can use this there's this app called duolingo okay i'll type the app duolingo you can download it from app store okay it's just like a game and you can start playing with it and and at least start building your vocabulary ahead of time okay <clears throat> start building your vocabulary ahead of time start learning the language you know listening to the songs and it's just going to help you especially if you plan to stay here afterwards you know the, the language is just going to help you big time and then when you come and you start your studies, I'm advising you, you have to be very focused, okay? <clears throat> One second. So I'm already getting to the end of my webinar. I believe I've touched most of the points. The other things, you always figure them out yourself. Like I said, there is no book out there that outlines everything because um, things are always very, you know, they are unique. So when you set for a school, you just follow the requirements. Okay, but I think I've given you um, <clears throat> the push to just um, go ahead. Okay, so uh, like I was saying, um, when you come, I suggest be very focused with your studies because um, more often than not, the the level of education here is pretty high, maybe higher than where you're coming from. Okay, the standard is higher okay like in nigeria for instance i know when i was in university to get if i get a 70 that's the highest grade possible right because most universities in nigeria if you get a 70 you've gotten an a and that's the highest grade possible but here in germany they do not do like that like you mark based on your grades so 70 is not an a it's actually just it's just actually <laughs> it's more like just a little bit above average okay so you need to to get the highest grade here you have to get 95 percent to 100 percent like over 100 90 to 95 to 100 okay so it's quite tough but it's possible and it's going to stretch you okay but it's very good you have this idea so that you don't come because i know some people who are very good in nigeria and they came with that mindset and i'm telling you they were humbled okay so it's better you humble yourself ahead of time <laughs> and then you approach the system knowing that you have to be more precise and clinical okay and of course knowing that you have to work too Okay, so it just, it just requires a whole level of maturity from you, you know, managing your time and resources. But it's very possible and it's very doable. And at the end of the day, you become better at it. But it's very, very key that you understand that it is <clears throat> not so easy. Okay, not to discourage you, but so that you come with the right mindset. And then when you're done with your studies, when you're done, again, different universities have different standards. When you're done with your studies, Germany gives you the opportunity to stay 70. They, sorry, I'm reading a comment. Yeah, 70 is an AO. The highest grade here is 95 to 100. That's the highest grade that's called 1.0. So they mark according to your grades. Not that you just, not that in Nigeria you have 70 and somebody who has 90, both of you will have A. And they start saying, I have 5.0 to my first class. No, you don't, they don't do that here. So yeah, they mark the exact grade. So if you get 70, you're lower. 
if you get 95 and you're top and all that so it's, it's you have you have to be clinical if you don't know it you know it okay and yeah so that's it but of course it's very doable it's doable it's going to stretch you. it's going to make you better but yeah you come out well out of it so like i was saying when you're done with your studies and this is the great part too germany offers you 18 months a uh, period to get a job okay so when you're done with your studies you are not kicked out immediately you can stay back 18 months and within 18 months you're required to get a job and once you get a job then you can get a job visa and you can stay a bit longer and after maybe two years if your german is very good you can get a permanent residency okay so you see that there's a straight path from studying here to staying permanently if that's what you desire if you don't want to return back to nigeria or maybe go to another country but it's very possible okay but again it also lies in your german okay, if your german is very good then it increases your chances of getting a job after studying because as much as um getting your grades is good grade is not really a big deal here it's just that you should pass well just pass don't fail especially except you're planning to go for a phd if not that's okay if you just pass you're okay okay but if you plan to go to for a phd afterward of course grades is very important but if you're not planning to go for a phd if you just want a job there's just enough for you to pass just just pass 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 you're fine but what we, what would really affect you getting a job afterwards is your german proficiency is probably more important than whatever grades you got okay so it's going to reduce um so like i said you may not need german for studying but it's going to help you in every other area of your life because if you want to make more friends you want to integrate more into the society then of course you need german okay a couple of questions if i if i can speak german very well i cannot so maybe i'm not a very good advisor when it comes to language i cannot but maybe i can i can speak a little to find my way around of course i know a couple of friends who can speak quite well we have different level of motivation and we have different plans too so don't go with my own plan okay but generally try to learn the language it helps a lot do i need the language for everyday activity well the thing is that maybe 70 percent of my friends are international students like me so we speak english a lot i have a couple of german friends too who we speak english and we practice german but i say a lot of times i speak english okay maybe that's an issue too Okay, but of course, if I wanted to speak German, I could always speak German too and practice with it. Okay, yeah, so I think I've answered all the questions from the very beginning to the very end. All the details you need are, are right here. And so what I'll do is this. Um, I'm going to leave the replay on my Facebook page for the next... From now till tomorrow okay i'm just gonna leave it from now till tomorrow and after that i think i'll take it out and move it over to my youtube channel and then please i'll suggest you if you're not following me already please follow me because this is just the beginning of a couple of other things i'll be doing um i'll be sharing more value from time to time on different topics not just on studying um a couple of things i've learned and I've been able to do over time i'm going to be sharing them more often so i just want you to keep an eye on this page and most likely on my youtube channel too i think i'll be sharing more things on my youtube channel but we'll see how it goes but for now just my facebook page okay so like i said my replay will be here the replay will be here because i've seen all questions and i think i've answered all questions before so there's no need going over them again if you missed any part of it i suggest that you find time to watch between today and tomorrow if you're able to watch between today and tomorrow, we'll also find a way to put it on my YouTube channel and you can always watch. Okay, <clears throat> that's the end. I want to thank you guys for staying true. I know a couple of people were going and coming and going and coming, but I think the majority of people stayed true. And yeah, so before I go, I just want to see your review. How was it? Did you get... Did you get value? Yeah, because I already replied. Like, is this going to be here till tomorrow? Most likely. Then after tomorrow, I think it could. I'll take it to my YouTube channel. Yes. So I'll share when I when I work, when I finish everything. I'm going to share it. So please just keep an eye on my page, and we're gonna get more value. And from time to time, we're gonna do more things like this. We're gonna talk on different different topics, really. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to share my YouTube name. Maybe I'll share it. I'll, I'll write a post on it later today and just, just talk about it. But please, you can go through the replay. Yes, I think. 
Wow. Almost two hours. So I spoke for almost two hours. That's a long time. Oh. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad to to have been able to provide value for us. Now, if you meet the vital part, like I said, there's no issue. The replay will still be here on my page till tomorrow and even afterwards, it will still be on YouTube so you can go through them. Mm. Okay. Yeah, aha. Uh -huh. Somebody just said something that reminds me. This is the last thing I want to say. It's not about just information. I just want to encourage you a bit. Please do not be discouraged okay because i know in nigeria people talk a lot about um motivation and they talk down on motivational speakers i'm not a motivational speaker if you know me but i'm telling you motivation is very important too because sometimes without motivation you will not just have to move the push to do a couple of things you have to stay motivated okay you must not be discouraged okay you must dare all right you must not be scared of of even rejection okay because you may apply for one school and they reject you and they do not want you are you just going to fall apart no get up and apply to another school okay that rejects it if i mean it depends on how much you want it all right get up and apply find out what you did wrong apply again okay do not be scared do not be scared also because you can always write to these schools tell them if you have issues write to the schools write an email to them and say okay this is the problem i'm having is is there a way i can go around it and then they'll tell you this can happen or this cannot happen don't be scared to speak out very important here do not be scared to speak out always let out um, your concerns and say okay i'm having issues with this this requirement this is what i had can i do this can i do this and then always tell you so please do not be discouraged okay and now I'm, I'm not trying to <clears throat> i'm not trying to just flatter you but i'm telling i'm telling you when i started my application i had zero money in my account zero money in my account and i didn't have you know i was just a copper okay i didn't even have hope of where it was going to come through because sometimes people ask me how much do i need for the application and i think that's not a very good question because if i tell you oh you need one million for the application you're just going to get discouraged or you need 500k okay there's no caveats on there's no bracket on how much you need okay the important thing is find out how much do i need now okay if you don't have a transcript the only thing you should be thinking about don't think too much about the blocked accounts or the scholarship yes you're going to be discouraged think it's little step you know break all the goals into tiny you know tiny pieces okay you have one step i just need to focus on this when i'm done i move on to the next stage okay so instead of thinking oh good how am i going to get money for flight how am i going to get money for this you're not going to do that okay you're not gonna you're not gonna do anything okay so break it into little pieces find out what you need to do now focus on those small goals okay so the first thing for instance i need to get my transcript so just focus so the only money i should be thinking about now is not one million it's not 500k it's not four million okay the only money i should be thinking about now is money for my transcript okay and when i get out and i move ahead <laughs> so what's the next so i need to make application so i need to print out so i shouldn't be thinking about one million you're thinking about 500 naira to print out 1000 naira to print out so you work like that in small goals okay so that you can see what you've achieved you can see what's next of course when you're working in small goals you do not lose sight of of the general picture of the overall picture yes you do not lose sight of it but neither do you allow it to discourage you so you focus so much on what do i need to do now when you're done with it you move on to the next stage what do i need to do now when you're done with it you move on to the next you move on to the next stage and that's and that's how i did it and of course um <clears throat> with god with god in your sight you know you, you trust him that he's going to make your way i think it's going to happen okay so yes if you really want it then go for it okay and you could have a long-term plan so you could say okay i don't think i have the resources so the enablement now but i'm going to get all the requirements the ones i do not have and work towards maybe next year or uh, end of the year or next april you know, just set your own target work at your own pace and yep that would be great all right guys thank you that will be all from me have a wonderful day like i said the replay will be here from here now to tomorrow and afterwards we'll move it to my youtube channel which i will share okay bye